Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for Machine Sentai Kara Major Episode 2. This review coming very shortly after Episode 1 because the review was a little bit delayed due to some scheduling stuff. And I'll, I'll talk about that at the end real quick because it's boring to front load the video with that scheduling nonsense. But this was a really good episode. I like this episode a lot. I was very surprised how much I liked this episode. Just going in, you know, I kind of knew it was going to be the sort of status quo episode where you sort of set up some of the dynamics and sort of why Red is leader and stuff like that. But it really surprised me for the main reason being that it really didn't go the way I, this isn't going to go the way you think. Like it, it's really weird because I feel like something Kira Major is doing well is it's got this almost nostalgic feel where it has some really classic Sentai elements and vibes, but it also feels like it's doing something a little bit shiny and new in some ways. And that's kind of the way I think the core of this episode worked for me, is it had many classic Sentai setups, but the way that they went about them ultimately at the end wound up being quite different. So like the core plot of the episode was essentially the reveal that Red is the leader, and they did actually give a reason behind that, is that whoever's chosen to be the champion or the warrior chosen by the Red Stone is leader. Like that's typically the way it goes. And I liked that explanation. I liked that there was actually a little bit more of a concrete explanation that's set in stone. Instead of it just being like, oh, well, this guy thinks like a lunatic, so he should be your leader. Because that's usually the reason. Like, they went about that all the time in Ryu Soldier about why Ko was chosen over Nada and others. It's basically because he's mentally disturbed. And, like, that's usually the reason we get is because the red is basically crazy. We That's why they're leader. But in this one, I mean, that's still kind of the explanation. But it has more to do with his imagination and spirit. And there's, like, an actual kind of magic reason, like... Usually this person chosen is like an Excalibur thing where they are the leader and I, I liked that and there's all kinds of little bits like that in this episode where they explain little tidbits of the mythology which is something that's few and far between in Sentai in recent years like they explained that they also explained like why they're trying to attack the city with the monsters like they're trying to build up this energy to bring people but like one at a time will only allow them to bring one monster and I like that explanation for like oh that's why they're only doing one and like this is their overall goal. We also get an explanation later of like the the tears from the girl alien whose name I still haven't learned I'm gonna call her bra because she has a bra on her head like when tears create the gems that can create weapons and stuff for them so I love little tidbits like that it just fleshes out the world and makes it a little bit more enjoyable for me because I love details like that but anyway back to the main thing they find out Red's leader they're very unsure of it he's very unsure of it and then soon enough we're in our first battle because the monster of the week is sent out and uh, they make a rugby monster and I like the attitude of this villain who's like the subordinate villain again who's I haven't learned yet, but that he's like purposefully using things from Earth to try to torture humans in a certain way. Like last week he me mentioned the faucet and this week he has this idea about rugby. And I like that because it's kind of funny, it adds a little bit of a quirk to him. And it adds like, again, a legit reason why this monster looks like an object we know. Because that's like commonplace in Sentai and it doesn't always get a reason. In a way it kind of reminds me in Dino Thunder when they had the Geno randomizer to literally come up with a funny reason why the monsters were so random. And that's not something that's always done. It doesn't necessarily need to be done. I wouldn't be here running the riot act on the episode if it didn't do that, but it's a nice little, nice little detail. Nice little detail. So before the, they start the fight though, Senna has to run off to go run a race and then they start fighting, but then they're like, oh, we need her, we have to call her. And she's like, okay, I'll try to find someone to fill in for me and uh, I'll be there as soon as I can. Spoiler alert, she wasn't there as soon as she could. And so they're fighting and am amongst the fight, these people up on a, a Ferris wheel get endangered. So uh, Red quickly comes up with a plan and he draws out the design for Sky Mage, which allows them to have a mini robot to save them. I thought that was a really cool intro for it, a really cool reason why they needed a smaller, wispier robot. I really like the design for it, but I do have to say the CGI was rough. I'm never someone to complain about that. I'm never like a practical effects is king guy. I don't mind CGI, but it definitely looked a little rough. And oddly enough, in comparison to how good the practical robot looked at the end. But, you know, this is a Sentai budget. It's not going to be the best. But still, it didn't look the greatest, even though I like the design. But so after they 
finish the fight, they wind up saving the people, but they don't get the monster, and Yellow gets mad at Red for that. But it's kind of a no-win situation there. I think they made the right choice, especially since we were only seven minutes into the episode. Yellow, don't you know? You're not going to defeat him till the end. Go to Green, and they're like, what the hell, dude? Why didn't you show up? And she's like, oh, well, I tried to fight find someone to fill in, but I couldn't, and Yellow, I like, Yellow's like, over something so trivial, and she's like, you don't understand, this is really important to my friend. So trivial, like we said. You couldn't come up with the choice between being a ranger and her actual duties, um, and that's what leads them to come up, coming up with a plan later where they create the crystals. Rather than it being a new weapon, he comes up with the idea, Red does, of coming up with a golem, so she can be at two places at once, basically. And I really like this. I like this whole thing. Again, I like that they came up with a mythology behind this. I like that they were thinking outside of the box with this. I like that this was them using the gem powers to create something that wasn't a new toy. It was actually just a new plan. So when they fight the monster again, or just before it, they're like, okay, Green, now you have someone to stay here for the race. Um, but then when Red and Green show up at the fight, it's pretty obvious that it's the golem, even though it was supposed to be the real one. And we do our first roll call, which I find it funny that our first roll call was done with the green golem. But the roll call looks really good. I love all the individual shots. They look really good. And we have the very unique uh, team pose, which we saw in the trailer, which I also really like. It's unique. It's funny. I dig it. And so they do the fight, and Green's chasing after it, but she can't catch up to him like they thought she would, because the whole thing is that they think she's the crux of all this, because she's fast. And they're like, I don't get it, why couldn't she catch him? But it turns out it's because it's the golem. Again, it's something that I feel is pretty obvious to the audience, but they believe real Green has shown up. But then, not long after they notice that, real Green actually does show up, and catches him, um, and, and the golem tosses her the morpher. I really liked this scene, I thought it was a cool little twist, even though it was obvious, and I thought it was just neat to see her running alongside her ranger suit, and they get it done at the end, and something I really liked here, I love this scene here right after this where they're basically discussing what happened, because in most sense, I feel like this would have been the plan. They would have been like, I can't believe how selfish you were, Green, and they'd have been like, what I did was totally wrong, 100%, there's no room for a gray area, and then they would have, or they would have revealed this was actually the plan for whatever reason, to actually use both greens here. But there was a really great scene here that had to do with why Red is the leader, uh, why he thinks differently, and I like this because it went against so many things that will annoy me about Sentai, which is like, oh, the idea that we always have to be all working on the same problem. Because this episode very easily could have been something I hate in Sentai Power Rangers, where either it's, they're not making use of the fact that there's five or more people on the team, and they're like, no, we all have to do this one task even though we could spread our resources. Or that the idea that they couldn't just four people get this done. Although the beginning of this episode was a good example of where they actually needed all of them. But I, usually it would devolve into that, like, oh, we need all five people doing this one task, or we can't do this without this one person. And I like that there was a specific reason they needed her, not just that for whatever reason they need that one extra person. And like, again, they could have gone into like, the, oh, you're 100% self this is a completely black and white situation. I like that there was a gray area here, and Red understood, like, this is your passion. I mean, I do think she was being kind of selfish in this episode. I think this was more of a clear situation for me in a lot of ways. But I like that Red actually said that. Like, I get that this is important to you. I think it's important that you're here for something that's important to you, and you ultimately make the decision yourself instead of me preaching to you like it's an after-school special. And Yellow's like, yeah, but we're all supposed to work together. And I like what Red said about, yeah, we're supposed to work together, but we're also supposed to shine as individuals, and us being together will help us to shine as individuals. And I really like that, again, because I feel like a lot of that individuality is often taken away in Sentai, because they focus too hardcore on the team work aspect, which I get the big apart, big apart of Sentai, but they almost focus too much on it at times, and it's like almost a detriment. And I like that this episode almost kind of explored that gray area, and um, a little bit more open. It was especially refreshing, I feel, because the last few weeks of Beast Morphers have been all black and white, outdated lessons, and there's this episode actually presented a gray area and kind of more free thinking about that. And I really appreciated that. I feel like I went on too long about that, but I really wanted to drive home how much I really liked that within the context of this episode, but just within the context of Sentai, it was rather refreshing because these situations can be presented as black and white. But anyway, then the big kaiju monster shows up because they got at least enough energy to bring it out, and we get the debut of Land Mage because they come up with a convenient reason why Green and Blue have to leave. Um, I feel like it could have very easily been done with just one having to leave, so the other one's kind of hanging out there, but I guess then it'd be like, why isn't there a four mecha combo? But regardless, it was kind of cool that there was a reason why only three were fighting. And again, I like that they're like, okay, the other two had to leave, we can handle this. We don't need all five of us, oh my god, if we don't do all five, we're useless. I love that. 
and that's the reason we have Land Mage. I love the design for the mecha in the season. Land Mage looks so good. And when the monster shows up, like, it creates this darkness, which gives them an excuse to have the mecha be sh literally shiny, which makes the fight look even cooler. Loved it. It was a great fight at the end. But overall, this was a really great episode, I thought. I thought it felt very nostalgic, like a very classic Sentai episode in a lot of ways, but they took a lot of turns in the sort of lessons that the team has to learn in ways that I unexpected. And, or I didn't expect, in the way that I unexpected. And I actually really quite liked Red in this episode. His whole, whole catchphrase is still annoying. I don't know why I have any catchphrases. He still has those little things that annoy me about these type of Reds. But he was very balanced in this episode. Again, it wasn't like, oh, this guy is Toku Nonsense personified, that's why he's leader. He actually was quite level-headed. He came up with a very quick and effective way of saving these people with Sky Mage, and his way of thinking about the situation with Green was very level-headed and empathetic, and I really appreciated that. I hope that continues where he actually felt like a human being, and I like that he was very insecure about his role, but he never let that handicap him, because that very well easily could have been the episode too, where he was so insecure he was frozen and didn't know what to do, but he was like trying the best he could. Same with Yellow, he was clearly like the opposing force that was up against green, Red like at every turn, but it wasn't overdone to the point where he was like a total douche. And I like that, and so I was really impressed with this episode. Still cautiously optimistic about this series eventually letting me down, but so far I'm really impressed with how much I liked it. I love the mecha designs a lot. Um, like I said, it gives me a really nostalgic, almost mid-2000s feel. Like, we got introduced to the base, and all of that feels like that. Just something about the whole vibe feels very mid 2000s Sentai. Almost nostalgic and classic, but it's taking some different turns and some things. So, this was a longer review than I intended. And usually, episodes that aren't premieres and debuts don't have reviews that go this long. But there was just a lot I wanted to say about how good this was. I would overall give it a 9. But what did you guys think? Did you enjoy the second outing? Are you hoping to see... Well, I was say, are you going to hope to see the same quality we've been seeing? Why would you not? Like, no, I want it to be awful. But still, let me know in the comments. Until next time, if you like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps, and ring that bell, and notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.